Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we are going to discuss about the Saudi Arabia and Qatar crisis and we are joined by Prabir Prakashta, editor in chief of News Click. So welcome to News Click Prabir. So Saudi Arabia has put this 13 points demand of demand in front of Qatar. What does that mean and what is Qatar's response to it? Well, it's very clear that Qatar is not going to respond positively to it because it's a set of demands which essentially would mean that Qatar becomes completely subservient to Saudi Arabia and Essentially, it is regime, not only regime change of Qatar, but also asking Qatar to really become a part of Saudi Arabia as it was. So I think that's a possibility that's very remote and Qatar therefore is unlikely to uh, accept this demand. It's also very unusual for such a set of demands to be put because the argument that's been given there is they have to respond for 10, within 10 days and after that they will be monitored for the next few years. Now, these are not demands that you can make to a sovereign country. So the fact that Saudi Arabia has made such demands, either they have a very inflated image of what their power in the region is, or it is not expected to be fulfilled that this is really for show. The other part of this, and I think that's an important part, that recently the US has come out with a statement, it's a little strange. One felt that US or the Trump visit what had actually triggered of this crisis, but this the letter which the, whatever the US made public was asking Saudi Arabia that what are its evidences against Qatar on, on questions of terrorism etc. Now as we know this itself is a false claim because both Qatar and Saudi Arabia are equally guilty of supporting terrorist, different kinds of terrorist activities as per the US definition in West Asia. So that's, that was never a serious issue but the fact that asked this question of Saudi Arabia and this has been Saudi Arabia's response itself do, does seem to indicate that Saudi Arabia doesn't want to back off. It is going to continue its aggressive posture with Qatar and it has also demanded a set of things which are almost impossible for uh, Qatar to accept. It has demanded Turkey withdraws its troops. Now that is again uh, asking another sovereign country to leave Qatar and it's not something that Turkey is going to be happy about. So that's another fracture opening up very clearly. The second is asked Al Jazeera to be closed down. So we are beginning to understand what is driving all this, that Al Jazeera is seen as a threat to the Saudi monarchy because it does say certain set of things which the Saudi Arabians don't like. It's certainly a much better professionally run station what the Saudi royal family is run. So it's a, it, it may be following Qatari foreign policy and you know, on a certain set of issues it does. But it also is, as I said, a much better professionally run uh, station and therefore it gets much more eyeballs in West Asia, particularly the Arabic channel, than what Saudi uh, channels get. And that's really beginning to rankle with Saudi Arabia and it's a threat to the long-term Saudi Arabian monarchy. So I think these are the issues that have come up. How much of it is related to Saudi internal politics that we have to see. When you talk about the Saudi Arabia internal politics, this uh, the things are changing there as well as the Saudi king has announced Mohammed bin Salman as the heir to him, not his nephew. So what implications will that have? Well, there's been this argument that uh, Salman, the King Salman is already in a fairly advanced stage of dementia, uh, advanced or otherwise, but he's suffering from dementia and he wants his favorite, his 31 year old son, uh, Mohammed bin Salman to take over. He's moved his earlier uh, heir out, Mukhrin, and then now he's moved the current heir, Crown Prince, out. Uh, of course, this is all palace politics. So essentially, in a monarchy, we are not too interested in who becomes the king, because as far as I'm concerned, all of them represent a similar kind of uh, monarchical setup, which is the primary problem in Saudi Arabia. Internal politics, I think, is also very clear that uh, Mohammed bin Salman was a young man in a hurry. He is the one who is supposed to have been behind the Yemen invasion. He is the one who is supposed to be also uh, behind the uh, Qatar imbroglio. So there are indications that he seems to be playing by a different rule book than what Saudi Arabia had done earlier, which is relatively quiet backroom uh, politicking, but not being exposed to direct aggressive military politics in the region and their, their military uh, policies were really pegged on which power would support them militarily, not exposing themselves to this. 
at the moment, they're overexposed. They've overexposed themselves in Yemen and they are not getting anywhere with the, against the Houthis. They're really having a tough time. Houthis have in fact attacked them inside Saudi Arabia a couple of times. So they, that war isn't going well, except they have they endangered the health of millions of Yemenis who are now suffering from cholera. So it's a global disaster which the globe is not willing to look at because it's being done by Saudi Arabia who buys the maximum number of weapons from uh, European countries as well as of course the United States. So that is one disaster that is already on the offing for Saudi Arabia though it has been a much bigger disaster for the Yemenis. Coming to Qatar, Qatar is a very small country so it might appear on the books that it should be easy to overthrow but the same problem that they have Saudi Arabia has is that if it is backed by Turkey, military action is very difficult. It has a huge military air base of the United States which is involved in the actions against ISIS for instance in Syria as well as in Mosul. Now are they going to do away with the air base? Are they moving it? Are they going to move it? Not easy for the United States to do it. So at the moment though Qatar militarily is a very small country. The fact that there is a US air base of this proportion and Turkey is willing to support it and Turkey is a much more militarily powerful country than Saudi Arabia is means that it is not going to be easy for them to promote Qatar and Qatar economically is very well off because it's sitting on a huge gas reserve which it shares along with Iran. It's a common gas field. So in that sense it is very difficult to isolate Qatar easily because of Al Jazeera, because of money, because of Turkey now. So I think that Qatar is, uh, has the ability to write this out for quite some time. Thanks a lot Prabhi for giving us this time and as these things proceed, we'll be coming back to you on such issues. Thanks a lot. Thank you for watching News Click. Please keep following our Facebook page, our Twitter handle and our website.